Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Xin Huang from University of Texas at Dallas. My topic today is uh, space-time clustering uh, with stabi uh, stability probe while riding downhill. This is joint work with uh, um, Alexander Brannin, Lilian Levy, and Yulia Gale. So my agenda today includes four parts. The first part is motivation. Second part is I will introduce you a data-driven procedure for optimal selection of tuning parameters in the clustering algorithm called downhill writing. And uh, we have a case study which include environmental data and political data, and we have the conclusion and the future work in the end. So let me go ahead and start with motivation. Um, spatial temporal data mining gained more and more interest in recent years due to a large set of data collected by the sensor. Um, our research direction is to perform clustering on the spatial temporal data and extract useful information. Uh, specifically, we focus on a bunch of dynamic clustering algorithms whose advantages include there's no assumption on the number of clusters, uh, so it's different from k-means, and uh, the shape of cluster could be arbitrary in the result, and sometimes they take a dynamic view over the geospatial phenomena. Uh, the uh, dynamic clustering algorithm includes some traditional one like a DBSCAN, Dinklu, or the most recent one, Trust. Despite their high potential, the price for their uh, flexibility is that there is a set of tuning parameters you need to pre-specify. Um, specify these tuning parameters is a tricky point. Specify too small or too large will be leading to completely different result. So we want to choose it in a more objective way. That's why we propose a data-driven procedure called downhill writing for optimal selection of these tuning parameters in the dynamic clustering algorithm. So before I introduce you our new DR procedure, I want to walk you through a bit one of the dynamic classroom algorithm called Trust, uh, which we mainly investigate our DR procedure on. So Trust algorithm is proposed by CMP in 2010, uh, short for trend based classroom algorithm for spatial temporal data stream. Uh, there is a tuning parameter in Trust called value similarity threshold delta, which plays an important role in deciding the clustering performance. So here is a why. So imagine your data is stored in a matrix and each row corresponding to a time series. When trust decide if two time series will be grouped together, they check the Euclid distance of these two time series at each time point. If the Euclid distance at one time point is smaller than, than a value similarity threshold delta, then we count them as one. Otherwise, we count them as zero. So we do the checking at each time point. Then we count how many ones are there. Um, if if uh, uh, the number of ones are more than another threshold, then we can say these two time series are close with each other among uh, most of the time point. So trust will group them together with some additional condition, condition checking. You can see the value similarity threshold delta is important as a threshold for deciding uh, the cluster membership of the data. Uh, if you think a little bit deeper, uh, if we decrease the delta to a really small value, each time series will be grouped as a single cluster by itself. And if we increase delta to really large value, all the time series will be grouped together. So neither of the cases are what we want. We want to choose a right value for the delta. So that's why we propose the downhill writing procedure, which is a data-driven procedure for optimal selection of the tuning parameters in uh, using the notion of a clustering stability. So previous research used a clustering stability concept to choose the number of clusters for example, in k-means. But we are focused on the tuning parameters, which is a root cause for the number of clusters in the result. So we advance this clustering stability method idea to the dynamic clustering context. Also, we are more computational efficient uh, by using the clustering stability probe, which I will uh, introduce shortly later. So the intuitive idea behind this uh, procedure is that we want to propose a metric for clustering stability. And as shown in the y-axis here, and uh, the cluster, a small value of the clustering stability should indicate a better clustering. Uh, uh, a small value of this metric should indicate a better clustering stability. And the x-axis is a set of delta we want to select from, and uh, this metric should be a function of a delta. Hopefully, it has a convex function shape like this. Then we can pick a minimum value of this uh, metric, and, pay, uh, and the corresponding delta will deliver the best clustering stability. But in the reality, when we propose the metric, uh, it has a graph like this. It starts from very small value, increase to the maximum, goes several ups and down, and it decreases to the very 
small value again. Uh, what we want is still choose a small value of the metric to pick up delta, but we don't want to choose the beginning part and the ending part of the graph to pick up delta because beginning part corresponding to a very small value of delta, each, uh, each time series will be grouped as a single cluster by itself, and the ending part of the graph will correspond to a really large value of delta. All the time series will be grouped together. So we are thinking maybe the middle point, uh, is the, middle, uh, the local minimum in the middle area could be a good choice to pick up delta, but we are not sure. So that's why we include this uh, blue curve, normalized emotional information, or NMI, for clustering accuracy. We want to use this blue curve to evaluate the clustering accuracy of our select, uh, selected delta. And all this procedure is developed in the synthetic, synthetic data scenario. So this blue curve can be calculated with knowing the ground truth label of the data. But in the reality, mm, we don't know the ground truth label of the data. So the blue curve is not available. So the blue curve here only serves as external guidance to help, uh, to help evaluate our decision rule. And our decision rule is solely based on this uh, black curve. So the definition of a suggested metric is called average cluster deviation, abbreviated as ACD, which is a function of a delta. You can look at the part within the absolute value. So essentially, a difference between two capital K. And a capital K means the number of clusters. So what we did is we randomly split, we split the data into two subsets. Each subset contains equal sets of objects to be clustered. Then we apply trust algorithm with the same value of delta on each subset. And we record the number of clusters from two results and make the difference. So what we believe is that um, a class algorithm with the right value of a tuning parameter should deliver steady performance. So the result from two randomly split data shouldn't be much different. And we do multiple random splits, uh, splits and calculate an average. Here is ACD. Uh, the delta that has a small value of ACD will indicate a better clustering st uh, st uh, steady performance. So here is a Monte Carlo simulation study. We simulated 20 time series and the structure of the time series is shown in this table. We calculate ACD and NMI for a set of delta and put them into one graph and explore the hidden pattern, and we repeat this experiment 100 times. So this is one of 100 realization experiments. So the black curve corresponding to the clustering stability, blue curve corresponding to clustering accuracy. Uh, we want to choose the, uh, uh, the, the position of the red vertical line corresponding to the delta that delivers the best clustering accuracy in this simulation. We want our selected delta to be near this red vertical line so that it can also deliver good clustering accuracy. Um, by looking at this graph, we are, we are thinking maybe the local minima in the black curve here could be a good choice because it is right in the position of the red vertical line, so it delivers the best clustering accuracy. As meanwhile, it is a local minima of the black curve, so it can also deliver good clustering stability. So then we check the rest of uh, uh, simulation experiments and a similar pattern are observed. We finalize, we finalize our decision rule as a delta optimal, uh, data optimal as an argument of a local minima ACD. And we make it compare with delta oracle, which corresponding to the red vertical line. So here is a comparison table. You can see in terms of uh, uh, classroom accuracy, average AMI, our delta optimal achieve a point A2, which is uh, quite close to the best one, point A3. As a meanwhile, we achieve better classroom stability by decreasing the average uh, ACD from point A2 to point one one. And uh, this procedure, uh, the local minima here is uh, located like at the back side of the hill. If you want to come through the local minima, you have to come from the top of the hill, go several ups and down, like riding a horse. So we name our procedure like downhill riding procedure. And the downhill riding procedure can not only help select a tuning parameter in trust, but also can help select a tuning parameters in other classroom algorithm. So here is the application of a DR procedure on DB scan. So we're trying to help select a tuning parameter in DB scan and make it compare with other selection method. Then we apply DB scan with this different selected tuning parameter on real benchmark data and test its accuracy. So a little bit overview of DB scan, um, uh, which is proposed by Esther in 1996, uh, which won the 2014 uh, Test of Time Award of KDD. 
So there are two tuning parameters in DB scan. One is epsilon, another one is number of points. And the epsilon is uh, more important in controlling the clustering performance. So here we have select the tuning parameter epsilon. Uh, the real benchmark data we use is the URIS data, uh, 150 samples of four variables for three clusters. And the first column here is a different value of a minimum points, of, uh, uh, the second parameter's value. And the second column is the epsilon selected by our DR procedure. And the third, measure, the third column is the epsilon selected by the K distance graph, which is uh, uh, the original measure proposed by the author in his paper. And the third, third one is uh, the optics, which uh, is uh, an improved version of DB scan, uh, generating rich elevated prod and explore the cluster membership uh, altogether. So you can see uh, the epsilon selected by our DR procedure also performs other selection method and for different value of the minimum points. In the paper, we also have a simulation study show the tuning parameters selected by the DR procedure uh, can, uh, can help the clustering algorithm achieve better performance. Right now, we have the tuning parameters. We can insert it back, uh, we can insert it back into the clustering algorithm and apply the clustering algorithm on the real data. So here comes the case study. The first case study is the environmental data. Uh, what we have is a yearly temperature re record among 167 climate stations in central Germany over 60 years. So we want to cluster climate stations. Each climate station is a time series of uh, yearly temperature. And we'll apply trust algorithm here, and uh, we use a mean absolute percentage error MAP for describing the clustering accuracy. And uh, MAP is for describing the homogeneity of elements in the result. So small value of MAP indicates more homogeneity of the members in the cluster, that's better performance. And uh, uh, the delta is, is selected by the DR procedure as 0 0.036. So here is the clustering result. So we generate four class results, each for a different time period. And this one is the most recent per, uh, time period. So 167 climate stations are grouped into 19 clusters. Each cluster are labeled by different color. The MAP, the, MAP, uh, among, uh, the largest MAP among the four class results is quite a small amount, which is, is uh, 0 0.72, which shows the, uh, the homogeneity of the element in the cluster in the result. And remarkably, we find something uh, that supports our result. So we found out that within each cluster, the elevation of the climate stations is quite homogeneous. Um, this is the same, same result from previous one. We just made it to its elevation map. So you can see this is a yellow cluster located below 300 feet, but this is a red cluster located near around 550, 600 feet. So, which actually makes sense because elevation is a key factor in deciding temperatures in the local area. And here is the environmental data. Another case study, we have a political data. So what we have is uh, legislative rhetorics of 31 senators for 48 months in US Senate committee. So what we want to cluster is the clustering the senators based on their pro-lobby attitudes towards energy industry uh, in their rhetoric. So each senator will give several rhetorics in, within one month. Each rhetoric will either have pro-lobby attitudes, neutral attitudes, or anti-lobby attitudes. So what we want to calculate is the aggregate proportion of all the rhetorics that falls into the pro-lobby attitudes. So you can imagine we will generate the 31 by 48 matrix, each row corresponding to a time series of one senator. And uh, each column corresponding to uh, 10 point, and each cell in the matrix corresponding to the aggregate proportion showing how much that senator supports uh, the energy industry in that month. So here is how we calculate this uh, aggregate proportion based on the probability uh, equation proposed by Hobbes and Keynes in 2010. And uh, for time limit, we will speak this step. We still apply trust algorithm here Delta is selected by uh, the DR procedure as 0 0.094. So here is uh, the classroom result. So uh, we generate four classroom results, and uh, each is labeled by different color. So each circle represents one uh, cluster, and uh, uh, the relative distance between the uh, circles uh, means the relative distance between the cluster. And the, senator, uh, the initials of the senators 
and it's a state, uh, the party, uh, democracy, Republican, and his state are showing the circle. And there is, a, you may notice, there are even some circle without even a name in it. That's because there's only one senator grouping in that cluster. For clarity of showing the graph, we choose to omit it. You can see, uh, from a general picture, you can see at the very beginning, the number of cluster is uh, large, and their distance is uh, far away from each other. As the time goes on, they tend to converge with each other, and in the time period four, they become one big cluster here. So this actually makes sense because uh, senators will all announce they are different from his colleagues when they first step into the committee, and they are trying to win the support of the voters. But as time goes on, they may realize that they share some common interest with other senators, so they get together to fight for the common interest. So besides the general picture, we also trace some uh, individual senators. For example, the Mario Cantwell, uh, Democracy from Washington, John Tester, Democracy from Montana, and uh, Bob Crocker, Republican from Tennessee. So they are, they are, their names are omitted in the smallest cluster uh, at the first two time period. But the, their names started to appear in the big cluster in the period three, and uh, their name finally appeared in the one same big cluster in the time period four. So besides the senators who converge with other uh, uh, colleagues, uh, the senator who do not converge with, uh, with his colleagues also tells a compelling story. For example, Senator Lisa Murkowski, Republican from Alaska, she is a minority leader in the group, so her speech is quite different from other senators. So that's why she is grouped as a single cluster by herself in most of the time period. So this is uh, um, the uh, case study of uh, political data. So as a conclusion, we develop a data-driven procedure called downhill writing for optimal selection of tuning parameters in the dynamic classroom algorithm. And uh, for future work, we, are keep, we will keep, keep investigating the theoretical properties of DR procedure. We're trying to research to extend the DR procedure for multiple tuning parameter selection and explore the utility of DR procedure um, to other space-time clustering. So this is uh, basically about my research. Um, is there any questions?